Hey, welcome everyone to Grace to Gratitude. What an incredible series we have going on here. So many fantastic stories, so many expressions of spirit alive and well through our own stories, but our own lives actually evidence of this. And today I have a wonderful guest, my dear friend, Kenny Fine. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Marcy. How are you? I'm well and so happy to have you here. I know that you live a life of great awareness. So I imagine you have many stories of how grace has led you to realize that your heart is overflowing in gratitude. And um, so I'm just going to let you take this away and tell your stories and then we'll talk more about you and what you're doing in the world at the end, okay? Okay, great. Fantastic. Well, first gratitude to you for being a vehicle of grace and gratitude. Oh, thank you. And I mean that literally. Thank um, you. So one of the things that came to mind when I was thinking about grace and gratitude is for me, one of the most uh, profound ways that I have experienced that in my life is in relationship and particularly in relationship to spiritual mm -hmm. teachers, healers, you know, just spiritual people, people on a healing path, people on a spiritual path, has really since, really for my whole entire life, has that's been after my mother, <laughs> mm -hmm. it transferred to uh, it transferred to spiritual teachers, and it actually brings to mind that uh, this story. My mother, I was very close to my mother growing up. I was very blessed, and still am, to have had a very close relationship with my mother. And as a kid, I always wanted to stay home with my mom. I didn't want to go to school, you know, where people were mean and they were big kids. And it was, you know, it was like I was a shy kid. I was very sensitive, I guess. And I was a small kid. And I always wanted to be home with my mom, who is just super fun to be with. She's just an amazing, uh, loving mom in my, in my life. And I really just, that just came to mind to say that is in this lifetime, I would say that's really the source of all my experience with grace and gratitude. And the interesting thing about that is that I knew I was super close to her my whole childhood. I used to say I was a mama's boy, you know, proudly. Um, when I got to be a teenager, there was a little, you know, little work for myself to try and individuate and all that. But I, and my mom said, you know, like, I kind of pulled away for a while. And then there was a moment uh, when I was in my 20s, early 20s, when I was talking to her one day and she said, you've come back to me. And so it was like this reconnection and a resumption of this connection. And I think for me that um, there was always such a gratitude, you know, for her like protecting me and for her taking care of me. And this just popped into mind because I was thinking of spiritual teachers, right? Amazing. And, mm -hmm. and I was going to say really in my adult life, the greatest source of both grace and gratitude has been in my relationships, not just experiences, but re profound relationships with beautiful spiritual people. And a number, I've been very, very blessed uh, to know a number of just amazing people who are healing, who are spiritual, who are, you know, who had their own foibles and their own whatever idiosyncrasies but who has a generosity of spirit, you know, uh, just a willingness to let themselves express in their lifetimes in a way that was attempting to help others, that was being open to, to embrace others. And on many different, many different levels and many different styles, some of them were, some women I was so 
fortunate to know who were, and still am, who are profound healers and who are able to, uh, who are able to embrace people in their pain and in their suffering and in a way that helps heal them, helps, helps even just create the space for it and then to help uplift it. So there have been many, many times I would say that I have been able to reconnect with gratitude in difficult periods of my life through these, through these gifts that other people have given me through relationship. And I somehow it just really popped into mind that it goes back to that uh, feeling embraced in a way, feeling embraced just in a, in a comforting way. Um, so is, is that how you would define grace? As that embrace um, of would, the relationship? I so would, yeah, tell us, tell us more about how you would define grace under those circumstances. It's, it's well, a very unique perspective. Yeah, I would define that. I, I, I'm. It's just kind of formulating as we're talking about yeah, it. I love it. Uh, I would define grace as the awareness that I am, that we are being embraced. To me, grace is an awareness that the planet is embracing me. Mm. Um, it's an awareness that nature is embracing me. It's an awareness that these healers are, you know, it can be a friend, it can be a lover, it could be a, a spouse, it could be a child. This feeling that I am being embraced and held. Yeah. To me, that is feels like grace. And I and I've had experiences like that, even in nature, you know, even in, in the water, floating in the water, where I felt this just oneness. And I felt I love to float in, you know, when I go to the beach. I don't do super strenuous you know, activity. I like to swim, mm -hmm. but I'm not like a marathoner or a triathlete or anything. I like to just swim, you know, like just to enjoy it and to move. And I love to float. And this I've been doing for like 20 years, you know, on Long Island, being fortunate enough to be able to go in the water in the summertime. I literally, I love to float on my back and feel, you know, held. I feel mm -hmm. held by the water. And I had an ex I had a number of experiences just doing that, where it just something came over me like I'm totally being held and embraced, like I'm not having to do anything, just my being, my presence is being held and supported. And I to me that is I had a realization a number of years ago, where I heard myself saying, everything that is exists because of grace and grace alone. So I had also a realization that the entire exists, our entire existence in this reality, for me, it purely exists by grace. Mm. And that I didn't, you know, I didn't overthink it or whatever. I just took that in and said, yes, that feels true to me. So, I start from that uh, sense that, and that includes everything. And, and, you know, I am a sensitive person and I have been, you know, I'm not, I haven't been one of these, I've known people who are able to sit with tremendous pain and hardship in others, you know, healers, who I've just been astounded by. And I, I look up to those people. I mean, I, I, I admire and revere and respect those people. I am able to sit with people too. I just haven't had that same journey where I really work with people in their most difficult circumstances in that way. Uh, that hasn't been like my career path as a healer or anything, but I'm in awe of that. And what I sense, and I know people like that today, um, to me, it's just there's something awesome about that. And it's the presence of grace, you know, it get, enables those people to be able to sit with it and heal with it. So I have found gratitude. I've had to learn the practice of gratitude 
in difficult circumstances, having had to deal with a lot of illness and death of, you know, parents and close friends and at a young, starting in my twenties, you know, a lot of it very early. And I don't even know if I was thinking so much on, you know, literally thinking I needed gratitude practice or anything like that, but I was learning about gratitude and learning about tuning into the grace of nature uh, on just taking a walk, just to deal with the difficulties of life. And I, and I, without thinking about it, that's my practice to this day. And, and the pandemic, you know, the pandemic hit and I quarantined for three months without really almost without seeing anybody. And, but I would take a walk every day and I would be able to walk down by the river and, or just walk along a street. And to me, just tuning into the presence of nature is always something that re reminds me that there is a presence of grace in the world. And and so I remind myself, that's the practice. And I remind myself, and I always feel, I feel gratitude for that in so many moments, spontaneously, um, you know, in the, in the presence of a peaceful, a peaceful moment or looking at the water and just, just, uh, yeah, that's a lot of the, the I, I love it. I, I love this whole <clears throat> concept and, the focus of um, really sort of paring it down to the feeling of grace, mm -hmm. you know, being embraced, being fully supported. And we were talking previously about how this plays out in so many different ways in our lives. Mm -hmm. And what I love so much about what you've shared, Kenny, is that those things may actually um, escape our attention, right? <clears throat> Things are happening and clearly from an outside view, we would say, whoa, that was that river of grace that just took you through there and yeah. look where you landed and look what happened and all of that. But sometimes we're just so encumbered, right? By life and the things that are happening that we may not notice that. Yeah. So what I love so much is your, your invitation for people to just search for that feeling of being embraced. But it also, I think, is emphasized in how we need to sort of consciously choose that, right? Yeah. Choose to be quiet to kind of check out in our lives, well, where do we feel most embraced? Where do we feel supported? And I think the moment, the nanosecond that we like put our little laser beam of light in that direction, that light knows exactly where to go. And it's like, bam, we can feel our hearts opening to this high vibrational frequency of gratitude that is clearly such a huge component of love. And everything shifts, everything. Our entire experience shifts because our awareness has shifted and we aligned ourselves in that moment with that energy. I really wanna thank you for that. I think it was so beautifully um, portrayed and explained and it's a, it's a very unique perspective, or I guess maybe explanation of what, of what grace is and, um, and how often, Kenny, do we negate like what our relationships bring to us, yeah. right? Very often we're focused on what they don't bring. <laughs> right, <laughs> how the disappointments, the letdowns, the holes, right, the this, the that, and yet, clearly, if we were to go really within and just see ourselves as the center of the universe that we are, and just look in that panoramic view of who has been placed into our lives and their significance to us, yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I almost feel like throwing myself on the ground, even as we speak, right? It's like, oh, <laughs> my heart is so filled with so much gratitude. Just thinking about all the people who have come in and gone out yeah, yeah. in many different ways. Yes, and I do know that I've been very blessed um, in that way. And I did recognize early on that we do have to uh, practice and do something to ourselves. You know, I, I feel like some kind of practice is essential, whatever it is, mm -hmm. of tuning, you know, as Goldie Goldstein likes to say, tuning the joy strings, you know, of tuning our gratitude strings. And, you know, I know, I know people who get caught thinking, you know, they're, too alone or they're too this or that or relationships are too difficult and all that and I've been through periods of time where things were rough when I mean, you talked about the flow of the river uh, there were many years I was in a in a marriage uh, that was kind of founded on grief and mm -hmm. the loss of parents and things you know very at the very beginning and I remember once describing my marriage and it felt like we were both clinging on to a log mm -hmm. that was floating down this very tempestuous river you know and that was the best we could do was to a hold on to the log and you know help each other hold on mm -hmm. and i just had a sense when i was going through that because it lasted for quite a long time you know for years really um I remember thinking, if we can hold on, you know, and I didn't think be grateful for it, but I felt like be, be glad we can at least hold on and help each other keep holding on. Eventually the water's got to calm and one day we'll be able to we'll float over to the riverbank and we'll be able to let go of mm -hmm. that and stand up and then carry on. And that came to pass, you know? So that's also the idea that when people are in a really difficult time is to acknowledge and, you know, that that's, yeah, that's part of the journey, as you're saying, that can be part of the river, it can get very, and very rough sometimes. But then to look for ways that we can hold on for ourselves mm -hmm. and in any way, I think, draw on what has held us in our life, you know, and call on that remembrance, even just call on that memory and with gratitude for any time, you know, we felt held and, you know, held in a way that was protective, you know? And, right. and so I wanna just bring around the thing, I don't, just cause it was part of the story quickly that my mother, all these years later, I talked to her about my childhood and how I always felt so close to her and she always loved me, she said, oh, I always, and one day she said to me when I was an adult, she goes, I just want you to know, you know, you tell me how you always felt, I loved you so much and it's true and this and that. She said, it wasn't my doing, it was you. Huh. She said, when you were a baby, you came and put your arms around me and you held me and loved me like nobody had ever held me and loved me before. And she said, and you wouldn't let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how beautiful. So there's how that. Beautiful. Yeah. Which sort of brings me to the point then how essential it is for us to reach that place of gratitude because it's our way of giving back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What we know about love is that love is fulfilled with the giving and the receiving. Yeah. So what you just expressed was how your mother was able to give so much love because of what you were able to receive, but yeah. also with what you gave simultaneously. Yeah. And that really is the lesson of love. You know, lessons of love come down to one thing, and that is there has got to be the flow of the giving and the receiving, or it is not yet fulfilled. Yeah. So 
give us some final words for people who we know who may be having very difficult times yeah. during this Thanksgiving season. Well, first I would say, um, uh, in whatever way I can, I send my love to those people. Mm -hmm. And what we do, you know, what I've been doing with Goldie Goldstein and what we talk about a lot is tuning into our own pillars of light, our own connection to our higher self. That is an essential thing. Yes. We are emphatically connected to our own higher energy and our own higher being, whether we are conscious of it or not, whether we're like really aware, whether... It's not about seeing colors. It's not about bells and whistles. It's a recognition and then an opening. We talk, I talk a lot about welcoming the breath. Just a simple, I, I really go for the most simple kinds of things. Uh, welcome the breath that's coming into you in this moment and have gratitude for that. And then literally like just turn your head up, even if you're in tears, you know, Turn your head up and open your palms and just say, I welcome, I welcome my own higher energy. I welcome the support of the universe, even if I can't see it now. And know that there are untold numbers of people on the planet and above it who are sending loving, healing energy, you know, to the planet. And I really believe that um in whatever way people can reach out to somebody reach for something that brings you joy if that mm -hmm. means you know turning on a funny movie or whatever it is right just remember but the breath welcoming your breath sending gratitude to your body you know every cell and atom of your body just it's a daily thing just to send your own gratitude to yourself and you can start to generate that circle, you know, like that you're talking about. Yeah. If it's not possible to go and connect the way you're used to, mm -hmm. then bring, draw that energy that you're used to putting out and sending out and looking for in other people, just draw that back into yourself. Beautiful. And just breathe that in. And uh, that's my best bit I of advice. I love it. And we do our healing circle and we send our love. Yeah. So, yeah, Kenny. So first off, you've mentioned Goldie Goldstein a couple of times. And yeah. there may be some in our audience who have missed our previous uh, program with yeah. Goldie. So I'd love for you to tell our audience all about Goldie, all about your beautiful healing circle and the work that you're doing in the world. Okay. So one of the ways my practice has manifested is uh, through the creation of what I call alter egos, A-L-T-A-R, egos. <laughs> and these are vehicles. It's a, these are characters that are vehicles for spiritual healing energy uh, to be shared with people in a way that allows people to open up and relax and receive and all that. So Goldie Goldstein is my most current alter ego. And she is a spiritual messenger in the guise of a loving Jewish woman of a certain age in a certain era. <laughs> and over the course of the pandemic, I've been doing Goldie Goldstein appearances. I started in March to do them once a week as a way of giving people something to tune into that was uplifting, basically. That was the first idea. Just fun and, you know, with some songs and some energy. And then it evolved into a Zoom meeting. And then it be quickly became clear that it really was meant to be a healing circle. So every week, every Sunday, we've been doing healing circles with Goldie Goldstein in the Zoom Boom Room, in Goldie's Zoom Boom Room. And uh, we gather together small groups of people um, and Goldie just serves as that vehicle, you know, that vessel, the container to guide people to just breathe, to tune into their own perpendicular energy, 
you know, what's called the perpendiculous path, uh, tuning into their own higher energy. And then we take our pillars of light and then we form a virtual circle of healing. And then we share that energy with each other. We bring into the circle whatever is requiring healing. And then we send that energy to our loved ones and to the planet. So we've been doing that every week now. And I'm planning to just continue doing it. And it's been really a great, uh, a great anchor. It's wonderful. Some of the things you and I are talking about. Yeah. Uh, and it creates a momentum. And that's even that itself is an example of having the practice and whatever it is for yourself to do something once a day, once a week and say, I'm going to set this time aside and I'm going to do this to open and channel. For me, it's whatever creative energy that I have channel it in a way that helps facilitate healing and connection. And I can tell you that the people who come most often are they're isolated and they're, they're been quarantined and they're, you know, they get lonely. Sure. So they come to Goldie Goldstein and she talks about fabulosity. That's the other thing I'll say. <laughs> it's a good way to think about it. If you have anyone has trouble thinking about too many of these things because they sound serious, you know, finding yeah. gratitude and dealing with all the pain and suffering. Think about fabulosity. That's what Goldie Goldstein talks about. Your own fabulosity however that manifests for you is, right. is a way of tuning into that uplifting energy uh, that is within you and uh, letting that flow into your life. So that's what we've been doing with Goldie Gold. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. So um, can you tell us how can people reach you? The best way to reach me is to find me on Facebook um as kenny fine or Ken, at kenny fine is the best k-e-n-i-f-i-n-e -E. mm -hmm. goldie goldstein also has a page you can find goldie goldstein it's goldie g-o-l-d-i-e and goldstein with two e's like springsteen <laughs> so not like goldstein but goldstein so goldie has her own page too either way <laughs> but every week it's posted there's a theme um this past weekend it was almost home and i'm going to be doing a goldie goldstein thanksgiving evening how beautiful in eight o'clock on probably on something to do with grace and gratitude Ooh, i might fantastic. say fantastic <laughs> it is a wonderful subject isn't it it is yeah it, it really is it's it has been i know feeding my own heart and um it just keeps expanding in terms of my own connection to it, my own awareness of it, the realization that there is a river of love that is constantly in flow in our lives. Yeah. And it is remarkable how it just shows up. I think it's good to add it's a river of higher love. Yes. That is flowing. Because yes, it is. People don't say, oh, but there's no love in my <laughs> Right. Life. No, it's the river of higher love. Yeah. yeah. If you're too far down in the stones of the stream, try and swim. You have up. to bob up a little bit. Swim up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Bob. 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 <laughs> Swami Pajamananda, aka Swami PJ, uh, often sang a song called Dharma Time. And he would talk about swim, little guppies, swim, little guppies, swim on high. And that is another alter That's ego. another alter ego, A-L-T-A-R, yes. Swami PJ. Was a great sleeping Swami of Bangalore. <laughs> and he's been on retreat for a while. So Goldie Goldstein is a, is a, a devotee of Swami <laughs> PJ. So she's, she's received some of the empowerments mm. in order to transmit the teachings. Yes. She still has some more sleeping to do to catch up on her sleep. and download the rest of the teachings yeah how beautiful well thank you so very much for being with us thank you for all the deep wisdom um that you share and i really love how you've taken this to a whole other level and i'm feeling so very grateful for you kenny and the incredible light that you are in this world and how blessed that i am to be connected to you and um, 
I want to thank our audience for being here, giving us your time and your energy, your focus. You're so precious to us yeah. and know that you are loved and cherished beyond all measure by this universe and of course by us. And we're all in this together. So thank you so much. And thank you, Kenny. Mwah. And thank you, Marcy. I Until just in, a, in a circular way, <laughs> I am deeply, deeply grateful. And your, your invitation and your receiving of me is, is uh, really greatly appreciated. Mm. And it facilitates, you know, it facilitates that flow for me. Yeah. Uh, to feel welcomed and to feel embraced by you and by what you're doing is a great privilege for me too. Well, how beautiful for me to know that I'm part of your river of grace and that you are part of mine. Amen. So thank you so much. And thank you everyone until next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>